hole here in the grass. Here's where he's pushed the mud out. Let's see what we can get here. At least the water's real close. Phone. See if he'll come up. You sit around and you wait for their little wavy antenna. And then you grab if it comes up. Looks like it's going to be a new look. Oh, it's a gravel. It's back. It's hard as a rock. How do they dig in this stuff? It's beyond me. It's solid. I can't even break little pieces off. The only thing I'm pulling out is stuff he's already loosened. Nothing there. He was there. I saw his orange claws. <laughs> he was wiggling. I saw him clear as day. I didn't see no antenna. It's because he was above water. He's above water? Yeah. He's He was there. Saw his two little orange claws, some bubbles. Sure you weren't seeing that? No, they were two orange claws. But I saw no antenna. Because he wasn't in the water. And then he wiggled and he disappeared. Okay, uh, we didn't actually film the capture. Uh, it took a good 15 minutes for him to come out. Uh, I want to point out though, the substrate was like, had the consistency of cement. It is completely amazing to me that these things can actually dig in a substrate that's, that's that hard. Uh, we waited, like I said, about 12-15 minutes and uh, he did come up and I grabbed him. So I, wanna, I wanted to show you this guy because it's a very exceptional specimen. This is what we got. This is Camberus dubius. Beautiful critter. Uh, what I call the orange claw population. Because some dubious are blue, some are orange and blues. Just many different color combinations. This is typical what I call a pure orange claw population. It's got, it's not just a black carapace, but it's actually a dorsal band of black. So he's orange, there's definite 
separation between black and orange. Beautiful claws, a little black hair on the, the arm. And this is a male. And there it is, a gonopod. It's a non-breeding male. Gorgeous, gorgeous critter. We were lucky we got him.